Hello, my name is Vedant Chopra, and I am presenting how to use state-space methods with MATLAB and Simulink to model, analyze, and develop controls for bicycle dynamics. First, I will present the basic bicycle model, do some analysis, and then convert that into a state-space model. I will then do some analysis on the state-space model using MATLAB, and then I will check for some preliminary characteristics that will allow me to design a controller. Finally, I will develop an optimized controller and evaluate its response. This model depicts the most fundamental bicycle model. It makes many assumptions, with the two most important being that the model only moves in the xy plane and that the steering angle, delta, is very small. This is a reasonable assumption since if one were to turn the steering wheel too sharply, then the system would become automatically unstable. The input will be the steering angle and the output will be the angular acceleration. We want to find the angular acceleration since if we find it to be small, then we know that the bicycle will be stable. We need to do a little bit of physics to model our bicycle system in state space. We first calculate the lateral dynamics of the bicycle. The lateral force is the sum of the forces seen by the front and rear wheel. Since we assume that the steering angle is small, we can use the small angle assumption to estimate and simplify the math. We can also use the lateral acceleration described by the longitudinal velocity and the angular velocity, which we derive in this equation. We can then substitute this back into the original lateral force equation and get this fundamental equation. Using the angular momentum principle, we can now model the yaw dynamics using this function. Again, we can use the small angle assumption and simplify the math. These equations give us the forces experienced by the front and rear tires. C represents the cornering stiffness, which is a constant, and is the negative rate of change of the lateral force to the angle psi. We can now substitute the forces into our original equations, and we get these equations, which model the bicycle dynamics. However, we need to convert this into state space form. This is their state space representation with the A, B, C, D matrices labeled. Finally, we can test for the characteristics that will later allow us to design a controller. Before doing the analysis, we need to add values to our coefficients. These values were researched and they are meant to represent the average bike and the average biker. Now we can do our state space analysis. Doing the calculations by hand would be difficult since it's both arduous and time consuming. As a result, we will use a control engineer's best friend, MATLAB and Sinewilink. So to start our MATLAB analysis, we first need to assign variables to our state-space models, and we can assign our research values to, to the coefficients. We then write the equations and separate our state-space model into its ABCD components. For us to use a controller, our state space model has to be linear, time invariant, stable, and observable. Our state space system is linear as we can represent in its state space structure. Now to check for time invariance. If we had modeled the dynamics of a bicycle in its entirety, which includes starting from zero and acceleration and then later deceleration, our system would fail. However, we are using only the average velocity, which is a constant. As a result, we have made our system time invariant. Our system is marginally stable as the eigenvalues return two zeros and a negative value. The state space model is controllable since it's equal to zero, but it is not observable since it's equal to one. So we have to convert it into its diagonal modal form to check for how many states are unobservable. Two states are unobservable. This is a problem as that means we cannot design a controller for this version of our bicycle model. However, we can use minimal realization. Minimal realization removes the x3 variable, reducing the matrix A from 3x3 to 2x2. This automatically makes our system controllable and observable. We can use MATLAB's minimal function to minimally realize our initial state space model. Finally, we can redo our checks for our controller usability requirements. And please note that the use of n is to denote the new calculations. Everything is in check now, so we can finally do our controller design. We first do our feedback gain K analysis using our Q and R matrices. In this presentation, the analysis of the output from the original Q matrices 1, 0, 0, 1, and the optimal one, which was a substitute of 21, was used. 
R depends on the machine, so since we do not have a baseline, a value of 1 was used just to make the math simple. Then, using the LQR function, the feedback gain K, algebraic Ricciati equation S, and closed loop pole P were found. Now we use reference gain N so that we can calculate our tracking error. This was calculated by direct calculation. Now we can analyze our different models. While multiple inputs were tested, an input ranging from 0 to 23 was selected as it would represent most cases involving the small angle assumption. The open loop model had a surprisingly small angle acceleration that stabilized pretty quickly. This can possibly be attributed to the amounts of assumptions made earlier. However, relatively speaking, this is a large amount of variation in the output, and so it's a bad model. Now we will inspect the closed loop model. While it did have a larger amount of angular acceleration, more than the open loop case, it did stabilize really quickly. Now we can analyze a reference tracking model with the original Q matrix, which had the 1, 0, 0, 1. We can add matrix N, and now we can see that the system has both less amounts of angular acceleration and reaches stability much quicker. This is a good controller that can be used in some cases, but this is not optimized. The optimized controller reduces error by almost a factor of 5, and it stabilizes exceptionally quick. To summarize, we first took our bicycle model, did some physics, and represented it in state space form. Then, we checked for requirements for the controller design. The model passed everything except observability, so using minimal realization, we could finally design a controller. We checked the output angular acceleration, to check for the stability of the open loop, closed loop, and reference tracking model. We then made an optimized controller that had only one alteration to the original Q matrix. Thank you for your time. I hope you have found it interesting and informative. The model used for the bicycle analysis came from ResearchGate's active steering control with front wheel steering. Also, this video was produced as part of the requirements for the ECE 5115 Controls Lab 2 at the Collin College of Engineering, University of Houston, Houston, Texas.